this is Pastor John at Long Lake Wesleyan Church and Adirondack Bible Fellowship with your Palm Sunday message. Hope this finds everybody well in the Adirondacks. You know, this is Palm Sunday, and it's the day when Jesus entered a very troubled city. They were on the edge of riots. They were under Roman oppression. Jesus even knew the cross was ahead of him. Yet, as the Prince of Peace, he rode a donkey into the city, a symbol of a conquering king coming in peace instead of violence. Jesus was close to his heavenly father, and he got peace because of that. This is the type of peace that we would like to experience this Palm Sunday during the events in our country and our world. How do we get this kind of peace? It says in James chapter 4, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and man. You know, for weeks now, we've been bombarded by the news saying we need to wash our hands. It'll save our lives, and it'll save other people's lives as well. What's hard to wash away, though, is not so much the physical virus, but what the scripture is referring to here is a, fit, is a spiritual virus. The virus is what God wants to wash out of our lives, the relationship with him, which is emotional as well as spiritual. The world is enduring isolation. This isolation is torturing many people. It's causing mental and even physical health symptoms with problems that will last for years. This happened in the SARS epidemic in the early 2000s. And according to Yahoo News, our country is spiked in anxiety and loneliness due to the isolation. Meaning that every day that you wake up on lockdown, even if you don't leave your home, you're under what the Apostle Paul calls a spiritual attack, an invisible adversary. Our messed up world and our own natural desire to give in to our worldliness. And we must keep washing our hands spiritually every day with these things that want to attack us. So you wake up in a spiritual pandemic zone. But God says you to remain at peace in your spirit, despite the virus clouds that are hanging on around you. The best defense you have is to detox from the world's weapon and follow the spirit instead. The spirit is the vaccine for the spiritual viruses. That are coming. Here is the way of the Spirit. Isaiah 26 3. You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Or out of John 16, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Or in 2 Thessalonians 3. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Or this out of Deuteronomy. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. See, to choose life means to choose a meaningful life, even in quarantine, even in isolation. What the enemy has meant for evil, isolating you, God is going to turn into good cleansing you spiritually. See, every day, you're to wake up with purpose and not anxiety. Connected to other Christians is the best defense you can have against the spiritual virus. See, you live for a noble purpose in this world. You choose to live in love and purpose. If you live with love and purpose, you will not fall into the world care system that's presently descended on us, which is looking out for your own survival. See, if you choose life in the biblical sense, you're choosing to live for the kingdom and all those other things that people are, are, are fighting for, whether it's food or toilet paper, those are the things of the world that you can leave behind because Jesus, your, your loving Father, will take care of you. It, but you pursue his kingdom and all those things will be added to you. See, God's way is for you to willingly follow him and experience the blessings of a rich and meaningful life. God wants us to indwell us with his spirit so that we can all do all things through him and live a healthy life here on earth. Here's what he wrote in Romans. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now when I say I can do all things through him, we're talking about Palm Sunday style, which means you will have grace under pressure. That even though the world around you is in chaos, you will be in perfect peace and focus because you are on a mission. 
See, if you don't have a sense of divine purpose in your life, you will fall apart. In wars, captors will often take their enemy soldiers and put them in isolation and give them meaningless tasks, such as they hand them a shovel and transfer a pile of sand from one place to another. Because with no sense of purpose in your life, you break down. Have you ever felt like you were shoveling sand in life, doing things without meaning and purpose? That will break you down. We have a purpose that keeps us from falling apart no matter what strain we're under. See, we're to be partnering with Christ to redeem the world, even in your home, even in isolation, even in your fort. See, the Bible is the progressive story of God using mankind to redeem the world for his purposes. From the moment sin entered in the world, God has been working to redeem mankind, and you are part of that story. This mission climates after Palm Sunday, after the atoning death of Jesus on the cross, and then the resurrection that's going to be happening next Sunday. As the people of God, we are mandated to participate in Christ's mission. It says in John 20, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. The clear and encouraging message of God has been handed down to us to spread everywhere we go. At work, home, or even in your community, this is your mission. This word of God should be on our mind when we open our eyes every morning, regardless of circumstance. It says in 2 Corinthians, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his special appeal through us. I believe that the local church is God's chosen instrument to redeem and transform every community the local church is in, through prayer, witnessing, and our holy lifestyle. Through this, we bring justice, peace, and everything that is needed in a broken world. That is why the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 says we're to be daily praying for the kingdom of heaven to manifest here on earth. The world has hope because God has placed you in it. You are to have grace under this present pressure. It says in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We are working for the day when Christ remakes the entire world. In Revelation, he said, And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. So the world is being restored, and all that began with the incarnation of Christ is being moved along by the work of the church. We, as heirs of Christ, are doing the mission he has set forth. We're not just to sit and watch the news as the world crumbles, waiting to go to heaven. We're to be the portals that bring heaven to earth. Christians are the cure for the world's spiritual virus says in James, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. The right thing to do is to take up your mission from God to be a reconciler in this world, to bring people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's the first step. We cannot bring love and peace to the world around us unless we have it inside of us ourselves. See, your mind is wired for love, not fear. So God is saying, choose love. Neuropsychologist Carolyn Leaf says our brains are hardwired for love and that we have to learn fear. Fear is not our natural state as believers. Because of that fact, when we choose to live a life of fear, we experience physical and emotional disorder caused by the bad chemical reactions that take place in our bodies when we choose fear over love. It's like in the Adirondacks and there's a herd of deer beside the road. If one of them hears something and pokes their head up and starts looking around in fear, then everybody in the herd, one by one, starts poking their heads up and looking around in fear until they run away from the danger. That's how herd instincts work. Humans are actually herd animals. When someone in your herd, that is people you work with or live with, start fear chattering, it affects you. Fear chatter is when somebody says, how are we going to pay our mortgage? Or how are we going to get food this week? Or I'm scared I'm going to get the virus. And then that fear chatter affects everybody around you. But your calling from God is not to be a spreader of fear, to be a spreader of love and justice. See, as only Christians in this world 
but to be the ones that turn the tide away from fear. Fearful people are much more likely to have heart attacks, cancer, diabetes, autoimmune disease, inflammatory disorders, chronic pain, and even the common cold. Fear-filled people experience more insomnia, low energy, obesity, and headaches. See, but God has a different plan for his followers. He says in 2 Timothy, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Or as he told us in 1 John, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So how do we live in the no-fear zone? To live like it's Palm Sunday every day. We claim the same grace under pressure that Jesus Christ did. Through his relationship with his Heavenly Father, he was calm through it all. The chaos, the violence, the fear of viruses around you can all be controlled through your relationship with your Heavenly Father. See, as believers, the world is watching Christians, and our lifestyles are the best witness of the gospel. When they see that we have hope, they'll glorify our Heavenly Father and come to know Him as Lord and Savior. Most people think deeply about how to win this spiritual battle of life. It's like the bathtub test in psychology. I read in a psychology book years ago that during a visit to a mental asylum, a visitor asked the director what the criterion was for which he defined whether or not a patient should be institutionalized. Well, said the director, we fill up a bathtub, and then we offer a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket to the patient and ask him or her to empty the bathtub. What would you use? asked the psychologist. Oh, I understand, said the visitor. A normal person would use the bucket because it's larger and it's bigger than the spoon or the teacup. No, said the director. A normal person would just pull the plug. You want a bed near the window. See, we're to pull the plug on the evil of the world. Here's how you change your life and the lives of the people who watch you. It is through your mind. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. See, renewing of your mind, make this your person, Palm Sunday, a focus and grace under pressure while the world is in chaos. See, the world is at war, but you're at peace. It says in Philippians, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Let the mind of the master be the master of your mind. Scripture often refers to the eagle as a symbol of the renewing process. Psalm 103 says that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. Bible commentators say that your youth is actually when mankind closely resembled God in the Garden of Eden. That, your, that sin in our lives has marred that image, sort of like a classic Greek sculpture that has been vandalized with its nose and arms and all. We are to be re-sculpted into the image of God through the Holy Spirit. Many theologians also believe that God uses the eagle as a symbol of this transformation process because the eagle's natural strength and prowess, but also that his powers are literally renewed after the molting season. See, after the eagle has put off his old feathers, it actually receives physical strength to soar above the challenges of the world. So your challenge is to molt off the old feathers in this life, the fear, the anxiety, all the things that are plaguing you right now, and bring on new feathers to take their place. See, we molt off the old problems and the old cares of the world and put on the new feathers that God has prepared for us. Then we receive the supernatural strength to fly above the clouds, above the storm, instead of be caught underneath them. The eagle also has incredible hindsight to see things in high definition. When we take on the mind of God, we can see things hundreds of times clearer and we're able to make better decisions. Seeing things from God's eagle-like vantage point empowers us to discern and make decisions with the wisdom of Solomon. In fact, Isaiah said, They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Having a renewed mind by washing our hands of negative thought and putting on the mind of Christ is the only way we can apply our own vaccine to the world's virus. And then we experience life clearly in partnership with Jesus Christ and with a clear sense of purpose. 
In closing, you should consider Adirondack boats. If you've ever been driving along, you'll see no matter what, rain, wind, winter, summer, these birds are on the road pecking away at salt or whatever they're finding to eat. You drive by and they just gently fly away a few inches from your bumper and they land right behind your car as you pull away. And they still keep singing their same song no matter what happens. See, birds don't alter their songs or their joy at living because of the weather or danger that's rolling near them. Jesus says, consider the birds for a reason. Your joy and song are supposed to rise above your external circumstances. You fly around on the wings of eagles because of who you are, son of the king or daughter of the king. And it's by choice of realizing you're the son or daughter of the king. Remember, the challenge in the Bible is to choose, choose to recognize who you are and live as an eagle. Molt off the old bird. Bring on the new. Be an eagle Christian singing your own song of praise today. So the charge during this pandemic is to store your eagle's wings and to be renewed in the image of the Son of God. Remember, Palm Sunday, Sunday for Jesus was a time of peace, riding in on a donkey, bringing peace to his subjects. This is the same peace grace under pressure that we're to have here in our midst today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our churches here in Newcomb and Long Lake and our people who are across the world. We pray for your blessings and protection on the people of God. And Lord, we pray that you bless everybody today in the Adirondacks with the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Go in the peace of Jesus and be blessed. It is good to see you.